350 million people and their unquenchable thirst. Three distinct faiths and their unparalleled reverence. Hundreds of cities and their indispensable lifeline. Thousands of industries and their relentless abuse. This is the story of love and betrayal. This is the story of Ganga, one of the greatest rivers on earth. Water is Amrit, that is nectar. I've never seen something of this scale. To see this many people come down and have so much faith all night long when they were coming by, they were... Ganga rises from the glaciers of Gangotri in the Himalayas and travels thousands of kilometers, merging with some of the greatest rivers to eventually flow into the Bay of Bengal. Meandering through the mountainous terrain of Uttarakhand, winding its way through rocky hills, Ganga is the repository of fresh water, the celestial life-giving force, the serene nectar of purity. Ganga, 35 crore logon ko जीने के लिए, पीने के लिए, उनके नहाने के लिए, पशुओं के लिए, पक्षियों के लिए, इंडस्ट्रियल यूज के लिए ये पानी देती है। गंगा इंचांस एस शी फ्लोज बाय, क्वाइटली बट पर्पसफुली, एस द ट्रबल्स ऑफ एवरीडे एक्जिस्टेंस आर लेफ्ट टू बी कैरीड अवे बाय हर वाटर्स। पर्च्ड ऑन अ बैंक्स इज द बसलिंग सि� a buzzing hive of populous industries and their collective waste. This water is made of water, the water is the water, the water is the water. I didn't understand what the disease was going on. Then I knew that the doctors had to go to the water. What people think are mysterious diseases are hardly a mystery. In a city like Kanpur, the reasons are obvious. The vigor and current of the river has been diminished by the industrial affluence and the raw domestic sewage that flow into Ganga from various points across the length and breadth of the city. Every day, about 400 million liters of sewage travels through the 90-inch sewage line and gets dumped directly into the river. On the face of things, Kanpur is India's booming leather producing center. But beneath this facade lurks the flip side of frenzied industrialization. There are over 400 tanneries in the region which use heavy amounts of hazardous chemicals like chromium as tanning agents to prevent the hides from decaying. Each tannery is meant to recover the chromium but most of them flout the essential primary treatment. Under most tanneries, far from the outside world, are secret underground sewers through which the chromium waste and other highly toxic chemicals flow furtively into the river. Only a minute proportion of the industrial effluents travel to the city's water treatment plant, which is a sorry picture of old age and neglect. It was built to handle the waste from 175 tanneries but with the booming leather trade, more than 400 tanneries have sprung up, and the same old plant that is visibly outdated handles all of them. Sichai ka pani jisme ki mal jal ko chhan liya jata hai, ya organic content ko kam kar dete hai, us pani ko hum sichai ke liye prayog me liyate hai. Yaha problem ye hai ki isme lead, cadmium, chromium dur nahi hote hai, isle treated water me bhi mile hote hai. तो जितने इलाके की सिंचाई हो रही है खेतों में उनके फलों में फूलों में सब्जियों में अनाज के दानों में ये जो है जहरीले तत्व इकट्ठे होते जा रहे हैं एक गया बीस लीटर दो दिन तरह वहाँ चढ़ते खत्म इस पानी पे भाई से 
गाय फूल जाती बच्चा छोड़ देती पानी पिए से कई भाई से मर चुकी यहाँ का पानी ऐसा दोषी था कि खाने पीने से अचानक छाले पड़ जाते हैं ये हमारा पैर एक साल से बर्बाद हो रहा है इस पानी के जरिए The banks of the river stand witness to accumulated filth of domestic waste, animal carcasses, and industrial sludge, all left to rot in the water of the river every day, every moment. The surging population of the city that depends on this liquid treasure for its livelihood ignorantly keeps adding to the river's gaping wounds, not knowing that every blow to the river is a strike onto themselves. As she flows down to the plains from the heights above, the meandering paths that cling to the river open to the sacred ghats of Varanasi. The scarlet sun adorns her with hues of gold, lending a heavenly vision to the sprawling ghats and soaring temples. leaving behind a trail of endless ripples sparkling in her murky waters the very name of ganga is a prayer in this ancient city she is loved by millions as the mother whose mere touch is a pathway to salvation jo ghat kinare laha jalaya jata hai usse mukti hota hai usme ganda hai na ganga ji thodi na gandi hai wo to pavitra hai Varanasi gets its ancient name from the great rivers Varuna and Asi. Today these rivers that join the Ganga are nothing but open sewers which carry with them the city's offering to the river. More than 250 million liters of domestic sewage and industrial waste every day. Nature always whether it is air or water that takes care of the pollutants our abuse by the process of dilution and dispersion. but then there is a limit to which the ganga water can take the abuse this is a story of stark contradictions joyous and tragic pious and poisonous deep and superficial If this is an epic spiraling into a collection of stark contradictions and dire consequences, then it has yet to introduce its heroes. Navsarjan Dalit Shakti Kendra, an institution to empower the youth from the lower strata of society, is an example of how small efforts can produce enormous results. If you take a very slow and thoughtful walk in the campus, you will see very very small steps that we have taken here to save water. and also at the same time to educate the young minds take for example our dish washing system if i wash my dish individually i will use something like 5 to 7 liters of water to use to wash one dish here what we have is 300 people use only 200 liters of water to wash all the dishes we are on average saving on the campus around 7500 liters of water only in terms of washing dishes the biogas digester is a very quick uh, healthy and easy way to save water the fecal matter the urine and the flush water gets into the biogas chamber it is processed and on one hand it produces slurry which becomes the manure for the plants the second produce is the gas which we use in the kitchen to cook our food we are reusing all the ingredients in a eco friendly way which sustains the environment and also becomes a profitable activity 
from small initiatives like tapless basins, use of hand pumps, eco-sand toilets and biogas digesters. Every little step here is a giant leap towards conservation. As the Ganga traverses across geographical borders, she is joined by the Karnali, Gandaki, Kosi and Bagmati from Nepal. Home to the world's highest mountain ranges and rivers shaped by them, Nepal is an intricate blend of Hinduism and Buddhism. With different hues of culture and religion, it is a bustling confluence of faces, architecture and lifestyles. Bagmati River is a, you know, a classic example of a beautiful river that runs through this beautiful city of Kathmandu. It's really turned into a sewage, um, where we have all of the you know, sewage coming into it. The pristine water from the sparkling waterfalls turns into a picture of gloom when it reaches downstream. About 60 MLD of sewage and untreated wastewater is discharged into the river's water constantly. The deteriorating quality of the river poses great threat to the health and sanitation of the people for whom the river is a lifeline. So we need to look at more decentralized options, more appropriate technologies, where communities themselves um, are responsible for the management of the waste and wastewater. And in that way only we can clean up the rivers of this valley. The Sunga wastewater treatment system is an inspiring example of people coming together for the river. All the wastewater from the village flows through a pipe and is collected in two tanks. The wastewater then flows into the horizontal and the vertical beds where it gets filtered in the beds of sand, gravel and reed plants. From here on, the water is fit for irrigation and other household chores. This economic system based on reed plants is a portrayal of how the evolved vision of simple people can address the grave situation faced by the rivers in the valley. Another example of small efforts making a big difference is Siddhipur, a quaint village with over 6,000 people. Siddhipur was facing grave water and sanitation problems. The contaminated water from the Godavari River was unsafe for drinking, which led to frequent outbreaks of diseases like diarrhea. यो नेपाल पहाडी देश भएको कारणले गर्दा यहाँ यो इकोसन टोइलेट एकदम महत्त्व छ किनभने जुन पानीको अभाव भएको ठाउँको लागि यो इकोसन टोइलेट एकदम यो ईश्वरको वरदान भन्नु पर्ने हुन्छ एन इकोसन टोइलेट इज एन एनवायरनमेन्ट फ्रेंडली वे अफ कन्जर्विंग वाटर एन्ड रिसाइक्लिंग ह्युमन वेस्ट फीसेस एन्ड युरिन आर कलेक्टेड इन डिफरेंट ट्याङ्क्स द फीसेस इज ड्राइड फर 6 मन्थ्स and used as manure. The urine is diluted with water and becomes an economic and potent fertilizer. Siddhipur is a model eco-community. Its initiatives are an example of how small efforts can lead to significant change. Potable water has reached many households. Hundreds of eco-san toilets have been set up and a large amount of water is being saved. In Siddhipur, the love for the river has prevented domestic filth from wafting into her precious waters. Uh, looking at the water crisis that we are facing now, there are many small things that we can do. Well, we were working on this research project to produce struvite fertilizer, and we used urine as a main ingredient. We collect this urine from ecosan toilets, we put it into this machine called reactor, we add some magnesium, stir for 10 minutes, then uh, we let it settle for one day and after this day we have two main products. One is the, the effluent, the remaining urine and this powder containing most of the phosphorus, one of the main nutrients contained in urine. 
we can dry this powder and then use it on the field directly as we would use any normal fertilizer that you can buy at the fertilizer shop. Drip irrigation that we are using in our experiments. It's a very simple technology. It's just some plastic pipes with tiny holes spread on the field and the water will get actually to the point where it is needed, right to the plant. Compared to a traditional irrigation where you flood the field, um, especially in this hot climate, a lot of water will just evaporate and it will not reach the plant, it will not do its effect. While the rest of the city relies on the water supply network, Roshan Shishta's house conserves water, prevents pollution and is completely self-sustainable. This eco-home uses various environmental practices. It has adapted the eco sand toilet in an urban setting, the wastewater is recycled and reused for washing and watering the plants, and it sustains itself by harvesting rainwater and storing it in dug wells for dry seasons. So while the rest of the city is suffering from the lack of water, and they're also pumping sewage into the river, Roshan is taking care of all his water needs um, by harvesting rainwater, by recycling his water, and He's also managed to, you know, keep his garbage, you know, garden green, and also producing uh, fertilizer in that process. Amidst the sea of domestic sewage, contaminated water supplies, and dwindling rivers, small efforts like Sidipur and Sunga are reassuring examples of how our civilization and our planet can coexist in harmony. The story of Nepal's rivers does not end at the country's borders. The combined waters of these rivers in Ganga now enter the enchanting plains of Bangladesh. The river Rhine country of Bangladesh, straddling the Ganga Brahmaputra basin, unravels a whole new set of conflicts. Where faith and action, human and environment, the present and the future are all seen colliding. We use the water. In fact, we did not use the water. We abused the water. Take the case of Bodhiganga River. It has been so polluted. The name river is not appropriate for Bodhiganga anymore. Because physically, it is not a river because over the last 30 to 50 years, it has shrunk to almost 50%. Chemically, it's not a river anymore because what flows through Buriganga now is not water. It's a very complex chemical compound. The dissolved oxygen level in, in the river has gone down to zero. So you don't have any fish, you don't have any aquatic plant in the river Buriganga. And if you consider the environmental aspects, this is a disaster. So this is like a cancer. Buriganga is dead. Now we are gradually moving to Padma, which will be the next. And so the cancer is spreading and it will catch up with us very soon, unless, unless we arrest and reverse the trend. The waters that support millions of lives are today lifeless. The rivers that were meant to be a blessing for Bangladesh are today cursed. As the vast human population struggles for survival, profit and greed, the culture that worships the river sits ashore as a helpless audience. The show began in 1971 as the rivers took a battering to meet the needs of a newly born Bangladesh. Economic growth, industrialization and urbanization took center stage as environment struggled for attention. Today, Industries are discriminately dumping their affluence into the river. Urbanization is relentlessly encroaching on its banks. And the bursting population keeps adding tremendous pressure. The duckweed wastewater treatment plant at Kumadini Hospital Complex is an exceptional effort to revitalize the river. The wastewater from the hospital complex is collected in a sedimentation pond, after which it flows into a lagoon full of duckweed plants. The duckweed absorbs nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, and carbon from the water, thereby cleaning and purifying it. The treated water is used for agriculture, and the duckweed is used for fish and poultry feed. 
as life follows its usual course and people get by indifferently a silent adversary furtively adds to the river's misery climate change that's that's scary sea level will rise and as a result uh, we'll lose a lot of land if we say that you know we are rich in water resources then where is our richness the source of our wealth is really that glacier and what climate change is doing is taking away that away from us there is an estimate that if uh, sea level rises by 1 meter then we'll lose about 23 uh, 20 to 23% of our land on the coastal belt the disturbance or disruptance in that flow of the river is disruptance in that rainfall pattern the intensity then becomes disruptance in life itself saline water is intruding into the inland and this is affecting our agriculture so our major crops they cannot sustain the level of salinity that we are experiencing now all of these will create a lot of climate refugees they will be displaced from their homes and they will then go somewhere else and where would they go we are sitting on the fence and waiting on the other side a consequences when 350 million people start looking for alternate freshwater resources they will recognize no boundaries it's important to realize that this is a global as well as an individual problem very soon the ganga that our generations have loved so much for so long may not be there for our children climate change eating into our water reserves industrial and domestic pollution stifling it dams and pipelines reducing the flow and the ever growing human population demanding for more squeezed from all sides the resource that our lives depend on is rapidly disappearing we in the subcontinent we do respect the river in in many ways and we, we worship it and so on but that respect needs to go beyond just you know worshiping it or beyond just you know saying ganga is our mother or so on we need to take care of it and as i said not for the river itself not for the ganga but for us for our children for our own development for our own livelihood ganga also has finite amount of water it's not in finite amount of water ganga sukh si ja rahi hai aur paidal log is paar se us paar tak chale jate hain pani sara to kisi hai na pani to pani sara ujo hobe na pani sara shoril pak hobe na emon ki mittur pura to pani dorkar kaje pani manusher jibon we hang prayer flags over the river meaning that our deeds may run like water flow without any obstacle in between there's a lot of things that we can do as you said we can do it as an individual level we can do it at the institutional level at the community level at the city level at the national level at the regional level but whatever do we do the important thing is we do it and we do it now the story of ganga carries on names landscapes and faces change but her water remains the same its timeless journey continues till this life giver merges herself with the ocean today only human will and action possess the power to immortalize the ganga the era of discussion is gone and it's time to act yes the ganga can be saved country by country person by person drop by drop Thank mm-hmm. you.